Previously, we've looked at using Access in order to load data into our database. We've created a table, added fields, and then gone into Datasheet View to add one row at a time. While this works for small amounts of data, it's not really efficient for large amounts of data. So Access actually provides us a couple of different ways to add data. One is through the creation of forms, which we can look at later, and the other is importing external data. Now, importing external data is a very important process in most large database systems because there allows it to get data from another system and bring it in very easily. So let's look at how we're going to do that with Access. First, I want to show you the data that we're going to import. This is known as a comma separated value file or CSV. In this case, I have a series of names, first, last, phone number, and email. And you notice that it's set up in the exact same columns that I have in my table. Now these don't have to be in the same order and I could have extra data. And in some cases I could be missing data, but it's important to try to keep all of our data there whenever possible. Sometimes this means that we're gonna to have to work with our data, kind of manipulate it. Maybe it had a first and last name and we have to split that apart. Maybe we have to do something else with it. A lot of times we're going to go into a tool like Excel to manipulate this data or maybe some sort of data export feature from the tool that we got this from. This is set up correctly, so we're just going to look at the next piece. Up on my main ribbon bar, I'm going to go to external data and notice it's broken into two sections, import and export. I'm going to look at the new data source and you'll notice I have a couple of different types of data from a file from another database, an online service, or another source. You'll notice that with from a file, you automatically have Excel, which if I hover over that, is gonna be an Excel file, HTML documents, XML, and plain text files. The plain text files is the one that we're gonna use. We'll talk about that in just a minute. From a database allows us to pull database from other types of databases, not only access. Now when we pick from a database, we can import data from another access database or even other databases such as SQL Server or even DBase. And DBase is another desktop based database system. It's not as popular as access is and is often used to help us update and bring in old data into a new system. Online services, a lot of times we're going to be talking about things that are other Microsoft products like SharePoint, as you can see here, and other sources. The big one that we normally work with would be an ODBC database. An ODBC is an open database connectivity, and it's a simple way to allow data to be shared between different databases without having to know a lot about how that database actually works. Usually you'll need to have an administrator come in and create an ODBC connection for you. And then once you connect to that database, you can then go in and read anything that you were given access to. Now we're going to work on the simplest form here, which is going to be from file. And we're going to pick text file because text files allow for delimited or fixed width data. And CSV or comma separated means comma delimited. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check where do I want this document to come from. So I'm going in my case to where my file is stored and I'm going to choose import names.csv. I'm going to click open. Next it's going to ask me how do I want to import it and I have three different ways. I have import my source data, that's that file that I'm selecting, into a brand new table. Well, I'm not creating a new table, I already have a table. This, however, is nice if I need to bring in data and set up a table all at one time. So instead, I'm going to choose my second option, which is to append it to an existing table. And you can see the list of all my tables. I can only append to a table, not a query. It's listed alphabetically and customers is what I want. So it was already selected for me. Now my third option is to link to the data source. And that is I'm going to create a link. And so 
if that source file were to update in a linked system, it's going to get those updates for me because we're still pointing to that external file. The downside with the link is if I copy my database to another location, I may not see that link anymore. Likewise, if someone were to delete that file, maybe it gets corrupted. We lose all the data in that. And so I try to avoid linked files in a lot of cases. Not all cases, but in a lot. Where I'll tend to use a linked file is if I'm linking to an external database that I know is going to be around. In that case, I'll use something like the Microsoft Azure, SQL Server, or an ODBC database. And since I know it's going to be there for a long time, I'll leave it. And that way I don't have to risk losing that data. So I'm going to go ahead and append because that's the right choice in this case. I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to start an import wizard. Now, Access is going to try to look at this data and figure out some basic things. And you'll notice that it's already figured out that, hey, this looks like it's a delimited format. And so we're going to choose that. How you delimit it is going to be based upon a lot of different systems. Most people use a comma delimited, but you can also find space delimited. You can find tab delimited, etc. If you click on advanced, you'll notice that you can set what your delimiter is. For example, commas. You can change the order of dates if you want. So is it day, month, year, or some other format? You can set to how the date delimiter is going to be. Is it going to be, for example, slashes, dashes, etc. Now, we're not using dates, so I'm going to ignore that for right now. Click Next. Once again, here we do see the delimiter field, and we specify as a comma. And you'll notice that it says, oh, let me see if I can match these things up. Now that Access realizes that's a delimited field, and it's assuming a comma because it found commas, it showed me what the columns are. I'm going to specify that the first row contains field names. And it's going to say, is there a text qualifier? In some systems, it will put, for example, single quotes around all text. That way it knows that it's text and it can read it. We're going to set that to none. I'm going to choose next. And it's going to be ready to work. This works whether I'm importing a single record, a dozen records, or thousands of records. And I've done this in several systems where I've imported hundreds and even thousands of records of data. And when I click on finish, you notice it's going to take just a couple of seconds and then it's going to be done. Now, depending upon how much data you import will depend upon how long it's going to take. Usually, if you're only doing a few dozen or hundred records, it's only a few seconds. Now, if you're going to do this again, you can save these import steps. We're not, we're done. We're going to click close. But if you did, you could come up here to saved imports and it would have a list of all the saved imports that you could then go and rerun this. So for example, if you had a data sheet that was exported every week and you need to grab new data from it, you could do that set up automatically and it would be done for you. Now, if I come over here to my customers, you notice that here's all my data. It even tried to figure out the proper masking for some of these fields. Notice that some of them, notice that with some of the data that the import mask didn't come in, we could try to work around this. Notice when I remove the dashes and stuff like that, it goes, oh, I know how I'm supposed to format this. So we could go in and fix some of these if we need to. That's kind of the cleanup that I was talking about that you might do. I'm going to go ahead and click close on my customers. And that's how I'm going to import data. Very simple, very easy for us to do.